Hi there, welcome to the Fierce Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Kaylee Lindholm. And I think it's time for us women to shift the conversation in business and step into our feminine leadership to do the most iconic work the aesthetic industry has ever seen. Each week, I'll be bringing a powerful dose of strategy, sarcasm, solutions, and sass that will rev up your creativity and ignite your brilliance as you link arms with me along our shared path of personal and professional growth in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. Hello, leader. Welcome back to the Fierce Factor podcast. It's Kaylee here. Today, you are here for episode 141. And I can hardly believe that we are just days away from wrapping up the year 2022. And per usual, this year feels like it has absolutely flown by. And as I think back to the highlights from the year, you know, what really comes to mind for me aren't actually the big milestones. A lot of times they are, but in fact, it's been a pretty steady year of infrastructure development, system refinement, team building, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm almost scared for what is now possible because of the slow and steady and methodical preparation and planning our company has invested in this year. 2023 is about to bring us on a new mission to help 1,000 inspiring and intentional women cross the next million dollar milestone in their business. And to think that we have built the capacity to tenfold our impact is almost mind blowing for me. But today, this isn't about me. Y'all, it's about the transformative results that our clients are experiencing because of the work that they put into their business each and every single day. And I mean, they show up every single week and commit themselves to pushing out of their comfort zone, expanding their thinking and approaching their business with a mindset as if they already achieved the greatness that they have sought after. And we have a saying in our company that our clients need to be ready, willing, and able to work with us because so often we'll speak with women who know they need support. They know they can't continue on the path they're on. Sometimes they can't even imagine what it would be like to look in the mirror at a calm, well-rested, visionary CEO with all her ducks in a row. And although the cost of continuing as is might be a dire detriment to their livelihood, they still just don't believe it's possible for them. And I'll hear things like, once I have more time, I'll commit to your program. Or after I hire that new employee, I'll have more time. And for those of you who are routine listeners to this podcast, I may sound like a broken record here, but there is just no such thing as getting more time. I spoke about this in last week's bonus episode, the time versus money conundrum. Remember that time is a finite resource that we already have full access to. What these women are actually saying is that they don't believe that making the time to develop new habits around time is going to bring as much value as using their time to directly generate more revenue. And what I mean by that is showing up to an office hour session with me does not guarantee my client will tenfold the income she generates that week. But showing up every week for 52 weeks will, with 100% certainty, create a habit of gifting herself the time to imagine, plan, and become a strategically thinking CEO. This woman will tenfold her business year after year with fewer headaches, more vacations, and more fulfillment through the entrepreneurial journey. And yes, it's hard to imagine this because it feels so foreign and unattainable when your head is buried in a million to-dos. And I've been there. But it's the only way to get out of overwhelm and take control of your time and your growth path. And when I tell you this, leader, it's because I've seen it a hundred times over. It's not a wish or a pipe dream. It's the actual work that our program does. We stop chasing and we start receiving. We stop scraping and clawing for the next level and instead live in a space of sufficiency and watch the abundance flow around us. It's a whole different energy that most female entrepreneurs never experience because they aren't ready, willing, and able to do the unsexy work day in and day out to achieve this. And that's what success in the new year is really about for me and our clients. 
It's about ditching old habits and creating new, healthier ones that don't make earth-shattering change overnight, but will set you and your business up to enjoy epic accomplishments as the months go on. So this week, I'm going to share with you my list of the top five habits to ditch in 2023 to help you indulge in more memorable experiences, unscheduled open time, peace, love, and meaningful relationships. So without further ado, let's dive in. Habit number one, being pulled in a million different directions. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. You're like, Kaylee, this is totally me. I have so many responsibilities. I have to do most everything in my business. I don't have people around me I can trust. I'm in high demand. Everyone counts on me to get things done, and I don't want to let them or myself down. Don't think this is a habit. What if I told you this is 1,000% a habit, and in fact, it's not only a habit, it's your happy place? (laughs) Why do I say that? Well, what if I told you that you couldn't double-check everyone else's work for a week? You had to let the business operate on autopilot. What would happen? Would everything go smoothly, or would you come back to a shit show? When we don't have a strong, fluid infrastructure in place and a strong, capable team to execute, micromanaging becomes less work than cleaning up a mess later. But what's the real problem here? You're running around in a million different directions because you aren't focused on spending the time to build an independent business and team. Instead, you're running your business the comfortable way doing it all yourself. So kick this bad habit and instead learn the tools to effectively delegate, automate, or eliminate tasks that don't light your soul on fire or require your brain and yours alone. Habit number two to kick to the curb in 2023, scheduling add-ons and (laughs) squeeze-ins. The ones who are most guilty of this are the ones who coincidentally complain about their overfilled schedule, endless days, countless tasks, and lack of free time. And you know what I'm talking about, right? That patient that needs a little extra or sends you the side DM or the text, can I come in, right? Or I can get in for my appointment for X amount of time, so can you squeeze me in, right? There's a reason that you're experiencing this leader, and it's you. It typically starts by making one exception. I'll give you that, right? And then one time exception then becomes one exception per week, and then one per day, and then one per hour. And before you know it, you're becoming a slave to the late nights and sacrificing your lunch hour and your pee breaks. And here's the thing, if you don't begin to develop the routine at first creating boundaries and then protecting them, no one else will. If you fell victim to this bad habit in 2022, it might be time to put some accountability in place. Write down your non-negotiables, block the time in your calendar, and maybe you need to assign a team member the task of being your time guardian. This is the first step to embodying a woman who is strong and confident in her convictions, is running her business from a place of sufficiency, and who is leading her team by example. Bad habit to eliminate number three, putting up with okay employees. Look, if I had a dollar for every time I heard It's so hard to find good people. I'd probably be recording this podcast from a real sound studio. (laughs) Just put it that way. Good employees are hard to find because average is average, goddess. If your employees aren't living up to your expectations, you either have the wrong employees or the wrong expectations. And it's your job to determine which. If you're thinking about scaling up your business in 2023, remember the saying, You're only as strong as your weakest link. A great example of this is a client of ours. Let's call her Susie. Susie has a killer clinical team. She's well-respected and well-known for her proprietary method. She is looked up to as a thought leader in her industry, but she had a major mishap with a not-so-stellar front desk employee recently. Last year, at the end of the year, she received a call from a patient who realized that she hadn't been refunded a $150 deposit that was made toward an aesthetic procedure, nor had that amount been applied toward her treatment. So Susie went back through her records and realized that her team not only neglected to apply her patient's credit, 
But this had happened for approximately 600 patients throughout the year. That was a simple oversight, but turned into a costly $100,000 mistake before the additional expense of 10 grand worth of commissions were paid out on those deposits. The little things matter, leader. Another client this past year came to find out that her first employee, now a manager, had turned on her and was spreading venomous toxicity to new employees, bad-mouthing the practice, and trying to turn other team members against the company. Our client knew this manager wasn't living up to the highest standards, but she kept her around because she had been with her so long. She had history with her. She never could have imagined that one employee would have the power to so negatively impact an entire operation. Don't let ticky-tacky things, poor performance, apathy toward tasks, or drama fester. 2023 is the year to nip that in the butt. And I'll share a quick tip to evaluate yourself. If you find yourself complaining about an employee's performance, that really means one of three things. Either one, They don't know what they're supposed to do. Two, they don't have the resources, skills, or knowledge to effectively succeed at their job. Or three, they don't care. In each scenario, ask yourself which one of these three situations is true and then take action accordingly. Life-changing habit number four, quit accepting a less than ideal version of yourself. Now, this can be a tough pill to swallow because what this requires of you is accountability for your own thoughts and actions. If you're like most people, you haven't slowed down for long enough to ask yourself who you really want to become. Before you start talking about growth objectives and financial goals or expansion plans, you know, the first answer to this question and the first question that we work with our clients to answer is who is the ideal version of you? Are you her? Is she someone who wakes up every morning feeling a certain way? Does she spend more uninterrupted time with her family? Does she drink less? Does she have a healthier lifestyle? Does she vacation more often? Does she love on her husband in a different way? Write her down on paper. Then think about her daily habits. How can you integrate more of these habits into your daily routine in 2023? I would say start with one to three max. Master one, then move on to the next. You have the ability to transform your own life, to shift your identity, and to achieve a new level of greatness. But what this will require of you is to become supremely intentional about who you strive to become and then insourcing the discipline to show up in these new ways consistently. And finally, habit number five to eliminate in 2023 is pocketing your core values. Leader, I might ask you, what are your core values? And how do you know? Do you enact them every day and in every aspect of your life? I work with hundreds of women each year who tell me they have a certain set of core values that define the way they show up with their clients, but then they never share them with their team. They don't hold their team accountable to them, or they live by them when times are good or in certain circumstances. But I'll tell you the vast majority of the time I ask business owner what her core values are, she kind of makes them up on the fly or she has to go back and look them up in a file folder somewhere. I'm often asked to help with articulating core values because I'm good with words. And while I appreciate the compliment, the truth is I'm not excellent with words at all. I'm okay with words, but I'm excellent at communicating specific words Because for me, they have meaning. It's not about the kitschy language. It's about what you stand for. Your core values need to be the heartbeat that informs every decision, every new hire, every strategic move that you make. In 2023, I'd like to challenge you to recalibrate to your core values and stop throwing them in your back pocket. Share them liberally with your ecosystem. Okay, leader, I hope you enjoyed this quick and punchy episode My goal is to really get you thinking a bit more about how you will choose to show up for yourself as we advance into 2023. And you may already have an incredibly successful business, but making yourself incredibly successful as the woman that you want to become may be a whole different experience. And we are here to help you every step of the way. And finally, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for 
joining me on another year, another season of the Fierce Factor podcast in 2022. It's meant so much to me. This is my passion project, as I've shared before. This podcast is my baby. And I look forward to spending this time with you every single week. And I want to thank you again for tuning in today, Leader. And I will chat with you next year. Wait, before you go, hey, if you're vibing with this conversation and you want to join me on my mission to help 100 inspiring and intentional women cross the next million dollar milestone in their business this year, or leader, maybe you want to become one of them, head over to Facebook and join our free community, The Fierce Factor Society. Over there, we're taking this conversation to an elevated level. Get access to resource guides, podcast supplements, guideposts, and direct communication with me, my expert team, and of course, a society of fierce women making big moves and disrupting the status quo in aesthetic wellness. You can link directly through the show notes or head to Facebook and search the Fierce Factor Society. See you there, goddess.